guys, hello and welcome to the Guest Life Podcast, episode 49. We have a very special guest today. We got another special thing happening for episode 50. So it will be the end of an official era today. Um, you know, we have the uh, the privilege and pleasure um, with uh, Derek Doyle. He's a co-founder, real estate um, real estate broker of Legacy Real Estate. He's also a dear friend of mine. Uh, community leader over the years, and we have so much more in common than anyone would know. Uh, so thanks so much, Derek, for coming on the show. Oh, Dan, absolute pleasure. I'm excited about the opportunity today. <laughs> um, you know, over the years, getting to know Derek, I always say I met him, and I was like, man, this guy's an asshole. And then I told him that, and, and, and I got to know. So you take the assumption out of the character, and, and you really dive in. So before we get started, guys, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, again, episode 49, it, it's such a privilege to have such incredible, talented, gifted, um, you know, community leaders like, uh, like Derek and everybody I've had on the show. Um, but it wouldn't be able to be here without everybody tuning in and listening, um, giving their feedback and asking for more. So thank you so much to everybody tuning in. And today's going to be a good one. I have, I have a, I have a you know, feeling in my plums. <laughs> awesome. And congrats making it this far. Not many people uh, take the action and actually get this far. They just talk about their podcast. There isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they say like, I, I remember when I started and uh, the big thing was like, you got to tell so many people. Like, people say you're not supposed to tell people about what you're doing. Well, if you have any fear or doubt in yourself of doing something, tell as many people as you can. <laughs> because you want to make sure. You can't sure go you backwards. <laughs> you, you can't go backwards. I told too many people. You want to stay credible. And um and this is what that's what happened with the podcast. And, you know, I look back every time I get the the paper in front of me, episode what episode twenty, episode thirty, yeah, and then we look back and look at who's been on the show and how it's developed is wild. Um, so, Derek, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Okay, that's a that's Give a big the people one. That's, that's, a big one. that's a big one, man. Um, well, I've been like as you said, legacy real uh, realty. I've been running that with my brother for a number of years now. That's just sort of one chapter of my uh, real estate career, which started in 2009. So I'm in my what, 14th year now. Wow. Kind of just blows by, but a uh, number of different sort of areas that I've uh, focused on through that career. Started with one brokerage, ended up owning my own, uh, selling that after building it up, moving around to a couple other spots to, to what we have right now, which is Legacy Realty. Great team of, as I said, my brother, side by side with him probably for the last six, seven years now. Yeah. After he joined the industry with me, which is, is just awesome. I really like it. It's, you know, we're very close. Family dynamic is great. Other team members on our team that work with us or, you know, we got other brothers. Yeah. And stuff. So, and, you know, guys that are like brothers. So it's a great dynamic. It's a, it's really been awesome to see other people grow in the industry that I started in and from my time as a, you know, running different brokerages, bringing in people and training guys, you know, who come in knowing nothing about real estate and watching them develop their careers has been um, really satisfying for me. Yeah. And those, you know, a lot of these guys are my partners today. So it's, it's really come full circle. It's crazy saying 14 years, eh? It blows, honestly, I didn't do the math the other day. It blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> you know, doing, doing the numbers, like, holy cow. I think of like, still feels like yesterday, those, those days, you know, those first, you know, time uh, opening lock boxes or Wild. first time getting a listing and, and things of that nature, right? It's, it, it seems like yesterday, but yet it's, it was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think some of the time we don't take enough time to reflect and, and I, I say this often, but gratitude and reflection are two different things. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we talk about that. We well, got to have that gratitude journal in the morning. You got to, you know, say what you're grateful for. Yeah. But do we ever reflect back and see how far we've come? Yes. Right. Do you have the lockbox code? Is it the right lockbox code? It's like, no, you have a process for that. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. How are we going to show the listing? Right. What kind of photo should we take? Yes. Yeah. Systems are huge. Um, I think, and then just look at, as you said, looking back and reflecting, and I've shared this with you before in terms of how I sort of operate and, you know, I got my daily planner and I've kept them from 2009. I've seen them guys. Yeah, it's impressive. It's, so I have every year in the, in the closet and I make a point to go back usually once a year, twice a year, go back and just flip through some of the old books. You know, I'll pick a random book. I'll grab like 2012 or, you know, 2014 and just flip through the pages just to remind myself of. You know, they're mostly daily tasks and things I'm working on, not so much thoughts, but you can learn a lot by just looking back and going 2012, you know, you flip through five, six days in a row and you realize what was the most important thing to you at that point in time. What yeah. task were you constantly writing? What were you working on? What project was it? And it kind of puts you right back in that moment. 
and you can kind of go, wow, like that was a huge challenge or struggle for me at that point in time. Today, it's something I just do very naturally. Yeah. But to, to, to have an appreciation and reflection back to say like, you know, easy today, terrifying then. <laughs> and you kind of humble yourself too. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, there's things you're said that, you know, I could read, I wrote time and time again. And I'm like, shit, I didn't accomplish that one. Yeah. Right? So you kind of reflect on that, humble yourself in the moment, a couple of accomplishments, a couple of things that you fell short on, a couple of things where you change, you can see where you've even changed your direction over time. Totally. So it's, it's a great way to reflect and, you know, again, appreciation and, and humbling at the same time. <laughs> Well, man, you're 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 uh, you're wise for your age, and, but young for your spirit. And it's like, <laughs> you know, talking about you know where you started, and like you know, you were a roofer before you were an agent, yeah. right? Yeah. What happened? What was going on with that? Because Dan, uh, your brother Dan, had an interesting story too. He was in the insurance world. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, we both came from different backgrounds. For me, primarily, um, school was never a strong thing for me. Uh, I was. Mostly struggle yeah. going through through you know grade school high school. Um, I kept pushing. I went into to Moa College, and kind of my direction there and the direction from everyone you know teachers and stuff was like, listen, pal, don't uh, <laughs> don't set the bar too high for yourself, <laughs> right? And they were putting me into a lot of the you know different types of focus and and really a big push into the trades and and I actually enjoyed it, right? And but no 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 ideas, no discussions about university or. or or business or or things of that nature. Yeah, I miss those talks too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never, 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 we never talked about university courses. Yeah. Um, so when I went down that path, just kind of going, hey, construction's my thing. I did construction co-op in high school. I used to sweep basements for uh, for some of the builders. Oh no way. Yeah. So I, right from high school, I always had that passion there. I did shop classes, construction classes. Went to school for construction engineering. Um, during that, I was doing roofing. So I did roofing for a couple summers, doing landscaping. And uh, after that, the construction engineering program, I was like 19 years old, graduate from Mohawk, trying to get like project management roles and, and some high level roles. And nobody was interested, right? 19 years old, what was your experience? I'm like, I swept a hell of a lot of basements. <laughs> I got my <laughs> diploma from Mohawk College. Yeah. What more do you need? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. Experience. This yeah. is. Where do you want me to start? That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody was interested um, after after multiple attempts and interviews and this and that. So I kind of was just said, you know what? I'm gonna go do a business course, take this into my own hands, kind of thing. Um, no one wants to hire me. I'll hire myself. And I was pretty confident in that. And that was a, my whole business program. I was focusing on run, starting a roofing company. No way. So I had the business plan. I didn't know that. Yeah, I had the business plan. I had the logo. I had the money set aside. I had the list of everything I needed. I was about to go buy all the tools. I had the cash set up. I was ready to rock. And at that time, it was not the summer. I was working at a steel plant doing like 12-hour rotating shifts. Okay. Came home from a night shift one day. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, why would I want to be a roofer? And no offense to anybody in the space, but it was just like, I'm like, why? Like, you got business struggles. Like any business, but then if it rains, I can't make money that day. Okay. Snows too early in this season. I my, I can't. I can't. You can't do a roof when it's raining. Can't do a roof when it's snowing. Yeah. So like, not only do you have economic factors, the weather can change your outcome in a business. Found you know the employee base that I was going to be working with were probably not exactly what I was looking for in my life either. Yeah. And I made it a weird choice right at that moment. I remember it sitting in my bed at like seven thirty, eight o'clock a.m. after a night shift. Had my laptop and uh, a very good friend of mine, probably six months before that said, why don't you go into real estate? I gave it zero thought until that morning. And <laughs> I just Googled how to become a realtor. And I found the Ontario Real Estate Association Aurea program. Okay. And I was living at home and I said, okay, well, you know, go to bed, wake up, talk to your parents about it, see what they say, and then we'll figure it out. And at that moment in my head, I was like, like no. I'm not talking to nobody about this. I know how this goes when I talk to other people. They're just going to give me the fear story. And what age was this at? This was 19? Probably 19, 20, maybe 20, 21. And 20, you had the mindset at 20, that age 21. to make those decisions. And I said, you know what? On that spot, I just said, forget it. And I signed up before I went to sleep. It was like probably shy of $600 at the time, which wasn't a problem for me because I already had the money set for the, the roofing business. I had the money all set there, right? So this program was going to put me on a delay of doing anything for about a year, year and a half. Really? Because the to finish the program, okay. right? So I put everything aside. I was still pursuing the idea of roofing and doing roofs on the side, like side jobs, while I was studying and working at uh, 
Taylor Steel doing night shifts. But I literally was on like 12 hour, uh, those 12 hour shifts and I'd be like sneaking during my shift, I was banding uh, pallets of steel and they'd cut it, there was a cut to length. So they'd cut them, put them on a skid and then you'd have to band them up with steel strapping and so on. So I would let like three build up and I'd be on, I had like a drawer, there was like a desk and then a drawer and you weren't allowed to read or do anything on the job. You just like stare and wait for the next thing to come out. So I'd be like arms up on the desk hunched over with the drawer <laughs> open <laughs> and I'd be reading my textbook right be reading my textbook I let three or four build up and I was partnered with some old guy and we had to do it together and I was like Joe don't just don't worry I got this right I'm like you let those babies build up I'll go crush them I'll band them up gave me more time to like continuously sort of read and study no way so I just did that until uh, I had to do classroom and I got lucky I got laid off from there just about the time the, the classroom s- sessions were starting perfect did them and uh, that was like, that was history. That's the, the rest, as they say, is history. And then right from that point, I, as soon as I could, I joined a brokerage. Yep. And just went like full speed for a long, long time. So it's, so it's, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, got, I got to tell a personal story about Derek here. And, uh, and it's going to go into that, that full speed for a long, really long time. And, and talking about kind of some of the journeys, that, you know, over the years, Derek's become a dear friend of mine. And a lot of it's become from he's you know he's opened up and he's and he shared with me about his journey after, and um, you know when I opened the plumbing business it was like okay what do I got to do from a from a community standpoint how do, mm-hmm. how do I join the community yep I'm in business but you know what does that mean and so I joined the chamber of commerce first mm-hmm. and you know worked my way up you know people would usually when I came into a meeting would be like okay yeah I know the bathrooms are over there if you need to fix something just let me know when you're done. <laughs> 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 you, want to, you want to give it a minute, Dan? Yeah, 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 yeah no, I think they're being, I think they're in use right now. Um, no, no, I'm actually here for the uh, for the meeting. Uh, uh, business are, you, yeah, are you sure? Yeah, I, I own a business too. Um, but yeah, getting involved in the community and then getting involved in, in the organizations around the community, which is again Mohawk College. So, mm-hmm. so uh, I've been in a, a very similar path from a community standpoint of Derek, where's you know, he got on the under 40 committee of the Chamber of Commerce. Yep. And then you ran YEP, right? Yes. Yeah. And I was on the board of directors of the Chamber. Yeah. And that just spiraled into so much more involvement and community engagement. It was great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were both very fortunate to won, win the um, Mohawk Alumni of Distinction yep. Award and 40 under 40. Yeah. Um, at about 24. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it shows like, you know, as you say, you know, head down the rest is history and just hit it. Mm-hmm. You did, right? You didn't sleep. You didn't stop. You didn't, you didn't, you know, let up at all. And obviously that's led to your success. So just for anybody listening, like it doesn't just happen. You know, I talked to Derek before mm-hmm. we got on, I gave him the speech and I said, you know, this is like, you know, conversations around, you know, the high school basketball player that doesn't know how to get to the NBA yeah, and putting that college pro in between and understanding that there is a pathway there. And I think that beginning of the pathway from like not telling your parents about your big idea. Yeah. Right. Like I remember I was so similar. I just, I told my mom when I quit, I was like, hey, I just quit. I'm opening a Yeah, company. we're not asking about it. It wasn't going <laughs> to ask. wasn't going to ask. Yeah. wasn't going to tell her the dream because it wasn't that she wouldn't have. She just would have been scared and feared for me. It's like it's a natural parent instinct totally. to just go to protection, right? Not realizing full well that you you need the push, not the, the leash, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great statement. Yeah. The push, not the leash. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, like keeping me safe, you know, keeping you safe sometimes. You Like even, you know, with my children, keeping them safe sometimes means like pushing them into, you know, not a safe situation. Yeah. But for the next time when they handle when they're at that situation a second time, to me, I feel safer because they've already handled it once mm-hmm. on their own or, yeah. and, and have attacked it as opposed to keeping them sheltered from it. One yeah. day they're going to have to face that. And I figure the sooner the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it's so true. And you can do that. You can do that with guidance. You know, I, I'm sure Derek is a, is a man of many talents and one is, is parenting. Yeah. Um, well, you know, so keeping it on the career path. So what was next, man? You hit the ground running, you know, for, for everybody um, listening. Like, I think it's so interesting to see somebody to go from, you know, making a decision, split decision, but owning it. Um and, and taking that next direction. Mm-hmm. What was what was the path? You hit the ground running. What did you do? Where'd you go? 
I think it's uh, when I first started, I was young, right? I just the day I got licensed was days uh, after turning twenty three. Wow. Um, and so I kind of, you know, I, I feel like I'm pretty self-aware and I constantly strive to be more self-aware. Um, and, and one of the awarenesses I had back then was, you know, as I saw as a reality was I, I'm 23 years old. I've never bought a house. I live in my parents' house. Um, why would a 50 year old buy a house with me yeah. or sell their house with me? Like why, <laughs> why would they pick me? I have zero experience. I live at home. <laughs> Right, I'm the age of their children or younger. So at that point in time, I was, based on that awareness, I made a choice to not be perceived as a child, as a child in my in, or a, as a you know some young Lord. punk in the industry. Yep. Um, and you know, although that was very much a reality when I joined the the brokerage I joined at that time, uh, being in the, no one was in their twenties. Like the average age of a realtor when I started real estate was fifty four. Really? Yeah, it was like there was nobody. That's, that there was very, changed. very few people under forty. Definitely, almost none under thirty. Um, wow. So you know, you can see that as an advantage or a disadvantage. In that, you know, this is a pretty serious space. You're dealing with people's typically largest assets. You gotta show some level of professional. So I, I, you know, right away made sure I dressed the part. That was easy, right? Never went anywhere unless I was ready to go. Um, I, you know, at that time I would I made a point I wouldn't drink either. Nothing, no drinking, anything. So, you know, if I'm out, even amongst my peers, they're going to see me as a professional. Um, if I ever interact with their parents, they're not going to, they're not going to make the assumption that I'm on the level of their children. Um, so I just took those extra steps to, to, to show a high level of professionalism, knowing I was coming from a spot of low professionalism. Yeah. Um, so I made really big strides in that regards. And just always tried to present myself at the highest level. And then something I still operate under today is always adding value. So as my life has changed, my business has changed, it's just I still have the same perspective. Any time I'm involved in something, whether it be, you know, us going out for drinks or me in a meeting or in a business situation or with my wife or family or my children, it's like I'm, I'm, I strive to add value to the situation in whatever way that might be, whether it be help lift something or, or help bring, educate somebody or coach yeah. somebody. I just want to constantly add value. And I think if you're doing that, then... You know, it makes me adding value, feeling valuable, I think would make anybody feel good. Yeah. But then bringing value to other people's life is, is very rewarding as well. So that was kind of my my constant thought in my head is add value, add value, add value. How can I be different than the guy who's been selling real estate for 25 years? He doesn't have the time I have. Or he doesn't have this that I can do. So I'm going to be valuable in that sense, right? You know, other things, you know, look, at that time, there was really no social media. Yeah, it was really newspaper print. So I also made a choice too. I was like, I'm not doing what everybody's doing. And I've kind of always operated my life that way. Is I always said, like, if I see the masses doing something, that's my indicator not to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? They yeah. say like, you know, like they, they, you always talk about the 1%. You know, people talk about the 1%, right? From a financial perspective or, you know, only, you know, 98% of people, you know, do this, right? 2% of people do that. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I don't know the 2% or 1% people. They weren't in my life. I didn't really know people like that. So I was like, I'll just watch everyone else and try not to do what they're doing. Not to like, no, I'm not pointing fingers or offending anybody, but it's like, you know, if, if, they, if, if majority of what people are doing isn't working, then just don't do what they're doing. Yeah. Or I also had a thing, if I heard somebody who was like in their 70s say, and this was a, something I did even like even when I was a teen or, you know, oh, I wish I started doing this sooner. Or, you know, like those kind of like late life regrets. You kind yep. of hear people slip out here and there. I always kind of made a mental note. I was like, oh, I wish I started investing sooner. I was like, I went to the bank that day and started like, I had like money set aside every week. Okay. Small amount. But yep. I was like, okay, if he regrets that at 70 and I'm like 19, going to the bank, I want this X, X amount of dollars every week put into this account. Totally. Like, I don't get to decide anything. You hear, I just about, kept you hear it. about that a lot, right? Yeah, it's just like little things, right? Like, I don't know, there's lessons in it. Again, it's part of that self, that, that awareness is like listening to people. Like, oh, I regret this. I regret that. I regret this. Okay, well, I'm not going to say, I refuse to say that. So I'm going to take your advice. You didn't realize you were giving me advice. I'm taking it. <laughs> and I'm taking action on that today. Yeah. And then I also see like, okay, you know, back then, one realtor owned like five pages of the Spectator Home Guide. And then he was like 20, 20 listings on every other page he didn't own. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Go put one 
one listing in there. I'm like, I can't compete with this guy. So what can I do different? And that's where I sort of adopt the strategy of I'd go and see people. So I'd write handwritten personal cards, calls. So some of the coaching I had back in the early days was calls, notes, and Popeyes. I love it. Call them, send a personal handwritten card, and pop by their house uninvited and unannounced. And I just go see people, two minutes at the door, bring something. Hey, Dan, you know, I was in the neighborhood. Uh, it's spring, you know, or sorry, it's fall. You're going to have leaf cleanup. Here's five le- yard bags from Home Depot with a little cheesy thing on it. You know, leave your worries at the curb. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like stuff like that. But like I love it. that I guy with that. 20, you know, five pages of the spec and 20 ads on every other page, he can't do that. He's too busy. So I can do that. And that's how I'm going to make that connection with people and show somebody that, you know, I'm not some young guy. I'm dead serious about this business. I'm at your door right now. And I'd say, if you need anything, anything at all, from a pizza guy to a lawyer to a plumber, whatever you need, call me. I have a, connect, I have a network of people that I rely on and they're, uh, you just call me and they're yours. Yeah. And like one of the one thing I remember still tying into the roofing. Yep. I did that for my grandparents' neighbor. I knocked on their door. They're in their 70s or whatever at the time. Knock on their door. They might recognize me as being the kid from, you know, the grandchild from next door. Well, what are you doing here? I said, just, I'm, I'm new in real estate and I just wanted to come by. You know, we know you from, you know, my grandparents and this and that. I said, if you ever need anything, just don't hesitate to give me a call. I, zero expectation from business. Six months later, they call me, Derek, we're house sitting for my cousin or whoever. They're in Florida. And the roof vent blew off and the house is filling up with water. The water, the rain was coming down, it was sideways. I was still early in my career, wasn't that busy that day. <laughs> I said, you know what? I don't know any emergency roofing companies, but I, I'm like, you know what? I'll see you in like half an hour. Pulled my old tool belt out, threw on the rain suit, went to the house, went up to the, on the roof. It was literally like ready to blow me off the roof. It was such a crazy <laughs> storm. Went up there, fixed the roof. She comes back from Florida a couple months later. Oh, thank you, thank you. What do I owe you? I said, nothing at all. I, this was my offer to them. They called on it. This is, this is what I'm, this is, you know, I don't need the money. So a couple, about a year or so later, she calls me, Derek, I need to list my house. Come on. Do you think there was any sales pitch required? Do you think there was any like, co- like competing against another realtor at that point in time? Not a chance. I had already proved myself. My goal was that. I want to prove myself to, to be valuable, but I also wanted to prove myself saying, okay, you know, trusting me to sell your home or buy your home at that point in time is a big, big ask. Huge. So what can I do in between then and now to show you I am reliable and valuable to you so that like, once you find somebody valuable in your life, it's like, why would you call anybody else? Like if you got someone in your life that can solve problems for you at a single phone call, like you don't need three of those people. You just need one. So I wanted to be that guy and just, but I knew I had to build trust in small steps, whatever it was. So if someone, when I said, you need anybody call me and they called for a pizza guy, you better believe they're getting a pizza number texted to them or I'm ordering the pizza for them. Cause once I build that trust and like cover that barrier, I'm their trusted advisor now in anything. I become their go-to guy. So I was willing to do it in any little way so that when the real call for the real estate came, there's no question about, am I reliable? Do I follow through? Do I deliver? Because I've already done it for you on s- these numerous little small tasks. That, that, you're, that you're not making any money on. Right. And so I listed Just her house. Your, your, list your her house. Business. She bought. My grandparents' neighbors, they sold their house. I listed it. And it's just like a trickle effect. And this is all years after that door knock. Years after going back. And I went to go visit them numerous times with stuff way before I got business. Yeah. Right? So sometimes I think people look at that and go like, even with the podcast, I'm sure like viewership didn't grow in the second podcast. It took time and time and time for that to grow. And it's painful knocking on someone's door, not telling them you're coming. Awkward as be, hey, I just bring in yard bags. Like, come on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, here's Home Depot yard bags you never asked for. Yeah. <laughs> stock of yard. As soon as this, li- as soon as this launched, the stock of yard bags going yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and it's just little cheesy things. But it was like, that was my way to break through and into yeah. an industry where I didn't have an unlimited budget. I didn't have years of experience. I didn't have five years of clients to, to, to rely on for repeat business. So I was like, okay, how can I impact the people I know and prove to them that I'm the right guy without Ooh. having the opportunity to prove that quite yet. So find little ways to do it. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So I did that for a long, long time that doing that for so long afforded me the opportunity to start my own brokerage. 
So I started my own brokerage in 2014. Wow. And so that's, that, so that's five years after you yeah, became a realtor. Yeah. And then I built that to about so let's just take, 30 take realtors. Take a step back for anybody listening. Five years after, you know, you-, you That night shift. That night <laughs> 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 Sorry, from the night shift. <laughs> you know, you, you open your own brokerage. I think for anybody that's that's in the industry or understands the industry, is a huge accomplishment. Um, but also from a from a determination within a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank on you. That, I man. appreciate that. Yeah. So I that and then I, that same training, I got certified to train the program I was trained on. Yeah. And then I started training other people and putting them through the exact same course that I got put through and running it t- over and over again and continue to coach them. And How did you find that? Like, is that something where you get a lot of passion and enjoyment from? Coaching? I do, yeah. I do like it. It's, I think it's part of that, that value component I was talking about is mm-hmm. um, coaching realtors when I was doing that at the brokerage, it was because we were a new brokerage, we attracted a lot of new realtors. So people who had never spent a day in the industry. So, which I loved. I would prefer a new person over somebody who's been around, I always said, because like, I, you know, you have to break the bad habits with somebody who's been around. Yeah. Somebody who's new is coming from absolutely nothing. So you kind of got this fresh clay to work with, right? Yeah. And you can, instead of breaking bad habits, we never even discuss them. We're just putting in good habits right from the day, right from day one, right? Good business principles, good habits that they can operate on. And you train them and train them and train them and train them. And then, you know. Some of them, you know, in the industry, you could say they were comp- they became competition. We did so good because I was still actively selling, right? Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm like, who's got this listing or who found that property? It wasn't. It was someone I trained. I was like, just think about the feelings. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> you need to choose your path. That I chose. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm like, you know, I'm going to continue doing it. Yeah. And uh, as you know, even today, um, uh, you know, my business has changed quite a bit. Um, doing what I had done has afforded me some opportunities to to not be as active in the day to day operations of my business, and make have made a number of great investments and so on, and continue to do so. So it's afforded me an opportunity to have a little bit of extra time in my oh. days in my life, which I enjoy. And I've you know made a choice over the last probably six months or so is to really commit that time and try and help other people around me. I think I've taken a lot of shots over the last you know let's call it fifteen years. Started a bunch of different businesses. Um, I've had plenty of coaches. Uh, I've coached people. Um, the self-awareness component, a lot of personal development. I think I've really create, you know, well-rounded, made myself well-rounded mm-hmm. uh, without, you know, almost not even on purpose to this point where like, you know, some people are just asking me questions and it just started that. Hey, Derek, you know, I just, why is this guy asking me? And I was like, okay, well, hey, maybe I do have something to offer I wasn't quite aware of. Yeah. And uh, I just really became really passionate about that. And, you know, there's a number of people I'm just working with right now, just, just. Just to add value, like I just see it. My, my, one of the things that always frustrated me is I always knew in my life I always wanted more. I always wanted more. I always wanted like, and you know, that's a loose term, but I knew there was, I was capable of way more. I could see it when I went and, you know, when I used to work for others and I'd get frustrated. I'm like, I can only do 100%. This guy's doing 50. This guy's doing 80%. We get paid the same. You might even be making more than me probably. Um and it was frustrating because I could never turn the dial down. I could never do like, eh, you know, I'll kind of screw it. I'll just do 75 like everybody else here. I couldn't do it. It was just a frustrating point for me. And I just, but I also had no idea what to do next. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's I'm what the first, yeah, yeah, like uh, I will run through this glass. <laughs> Yo, but there's a door. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And so... When I finally started being able to uncover and start to flip some rocks and learn how to sort of take next steps, it was like, you like if I have a struggle today and you show me the little door, the doorway or the window, you don't even need the door, show me a little window or crack in the glass, I'll go through it. I'll fight for the next three days straight to get through it. But you just need that little guidance or push or someone to say, look over there instead of look over here. And when I got those little tidbits through life, I would just put my head down uncontrollably and just grind until I figured it out. Yeah. Um, and so I still see that today. And I think a lot of people are struggling with that today. And I see people who are like, you know, you could just tell when, you know, certain, like, you, you know, you just tell us certain people, they're, they're, this person's motivated, this person's hungry. I can see the frustration in their eyes. They want more out of life. Mm-hmm. But like, you also know they have no idea what to do next. And I'm like, it's so relatable because that's how I was. Totally. So 
I have different people throughout my life who all add little pieces of value to me. And I've always surrounded myself with great people. And I always have an appreciation almost for each person I hang out with, right? It's like, you motivate me for this. You motivate me for that. You motivate me for this. Everybody's got their, you know, my selfish little value add yeah. to, to my life. And I hope to do the same for them. But they're, this, co you know, this helping with coaching and getting people, you know, giving some mentorship. Um, I feel like from all the experiences and challenges and struggles and successes I've, ex I've had that I can bring that to somebody who's like, ready to run through the wall and just give them a couple little tips here and there, help them look, you know, a little further out. And I think a big one for me too, was not just coaching and business. And I think a lot of people want to talk about the coaching or mentoring. Everybody's looking for the business answer. Yeah. And often I think is like, I don't need to know anything about your business, where you're at. And I really, you know, not to say I don't care, but it's irrelevant. I'm not, I'm not looking to talk to people about their business. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like, business is a small little part of the overall like life, lifestyle, right? And that was my early coaching. My early coaching was focused around like the slogan was, it's a good life. It wasn't, it's a good business. It's a good life. Yeah. And we focused on five components, which we've always talked about when you and I talk about a lot, you know, family, financial, business, spiritual, and personal. So the, the principle then was if your business is rocking and your finances are rocking, but you're paying zero attention to your, your mind or your body or your family and friends, like it's not a good life, bro. You're rich, but I, it's, you know, as as we see, money isn't the solution to everything. So it's not it's not that fulfilling good life. So totally, you can have your family in check, mind in check, but if you can't afford your next meal, that's a struggle too. So it was a constant focus, and this is what I try and bring to people now that I'm talking with and trying to help out is let's not talk about the business because that's a very small component of your life. Important, yes, but small component of overall living a good life. So it was like trying to get people and say, we're not just going to talk about business. Let's talk about personally. Because, you know, if your health isn't good, how, how, how good can your business run? How long can your business run? How consistent can your business be if you're not physically fit, mentally strong, um, you know, working on your family too. A lot of people get stuck into the business and stop focusing on the family. Family falls apart. These are all inconsistencies that don't really lead to that good life model, right? So... I like bringing that to people and they think, you know, I think sometimes people start talking to me about business and then we quickly stop talking about business. Because yeah. to me, it's not relevant. It's not the most relevant topic, right? So like, how do we get your head strong? Because if you want to be great in business, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get your ass handed to you constantly. If you think, if, for any success in business, you got to get slapped around and beat up constantly. And it's overcoming that problem, right? Breaking through that and solving it. But like also in the process of getting beat up all the time and, and pushing through it to, to succeed, yeah. it can leave some like mental damage too, right? It can leave some like remnant damage on your body, on your mind, on your, your, on your family. If you're getting, you know, if you're having some tough business struggles and you bring that home, that's not good. Right. Or, you know, you have a business, an experience from two years ago that's sort of still lingering in your head and you haven't been able to get over it. Mm -hmm. or haven't figured out your way to, to, to accept it or move past it. That's not good either. So I think to be successful in business, you got to have failure and get beat up, but you also have to have the mental strength to like persevere past that and not become some sort of like jaded asshole in the business. You got to take it with a smile. So it's like, Hey, I got beat up yesterday. Guess what? Stronger today. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you can't beat me up like that. Like I, I'm not going to get beat up like that again. I'm stronger now, right? That move, I've learned it. It's not going to happen. You might beat me up tomorrow with something different, but I'll just take that as another feather in my cap yeah. as opposed to laying on the ground, giving up. And when you were, you know, earlier in business, because I know I was, I was very stubborn to the fact that I had to, I had to fail myself because I, I had the, I don't know if it's ego, but the kind of the awareness of, well, you maybe failed differently than me, or you didn't see it how I see mm -hmm. it. And I think, you know, sometimes we get caught when we're early in business and you, you hit, I always say there's a sweet spot where you're like, I'm going to take that piece of advice and I'm just going to, I don't need the feather in my cap. I'm going to take yours. So that's, I, I, I agree. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't need to get that beating. Right. right? I'm going to learn from your beating. But at the beginning, it's, you're just going in head down and you get, you, you become a little bit stubborn, but also I think it's because we, challenge what we feel is possible of the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I, it, there's, there's certainly benefit in learning from somebody else mm -hmm. and, and avoiding getting that, that, that you know, as, as a, just analogy I made up for some reason about getting a beating, but um, <laughs> like using that, right. It's like, Hey, 
sure, I'd love to see some other guy who's gotten in, he tells me how to avoid it and I can skip that step. No doubt, that's great. But I think there's also like, there's just something in having gone through it yourself, I cool. think, right? And, you know, I've had guys come to me and, you know, as I, I've, I've started numerous other businesses and I've had people come to me and say, oh, I'm going to go do this same business you did. And I don't want to be the guy to say like, don't do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm also not going to be like, yo, it was such an amazing experience. You should suffer through this too. Like, it's like, <laughs> so it's like a fine line of like yeah. giving some insight, but not discouraging because I do see the value in doing it. And, you know, it's a couple of the guys that have asked me about things. And I said, you know, like, if you feel the need to go for it, go for it, but understand it ain't as shiny and sparkly as, as it seems from the outside. Totally. They did it. They went through it, moved on, come back to me and go, Derek, you know, you're right. I'm like, I wasn't right, man. I was just like, it's like, I'm like, are you better for doing it? Or like, would you have rather have done it and maybe not had the most outstanding results? Yep. Or would you rather be sitting here going, ah, oh, you know, this Derek guy told me not to do it and I never did it. And you're chasing that dream for the rest of your life. So that's kind of something I've adopted too, is like, I'd rather sit five years from now failed something yep. than be sitting here five years going, I, I should I have done that? Or wondering what it could have been. I'd mm -hmm. rather just take the lumps or take the success from it. Cause I think everything offers some level, like some there's everything offers some level of experience. And I think, and that's something I had to coach myself on too, because it's easy to get like, lose like some motivation or, or feel like you want to give up some days or feel like, you know, your mistakes define you and, and or, or, you know, failures define you. But at the same time, I'm like, like some of the failures I've had, I call failures or stumbling blocks that I've overcome and hurdles I've overcome. I'm like that just makes me who I am today. It makes like not better than anybody, but it makes me better. Mm -hmm. It made me better having tripped over there, having stumbled over this, having fallen on my face over there. It's like, I'm just better because of it. I'm not, I'm not, it doesn't define me. It doesn't knock me down. I'm just better because I went through it. Yeah. Right. Totally. Man, it's, it's so funny. Um, these, some of the experiences, and, you know, I've had the pleasure to have, have these conversations, Derek, o offline. And, you know, I think it's just really powerful talking about, you know, the journey and the fact that it's a journey. And we're constantly evolving, constantly learning. And sometimes, you know, you get down or you get unmotivated or you get complacent. And mm -hmm. I think those are important times to identify, be aware of, and, and, and kind of pull back to that self-awareness. Um, you know, we always finish off the podcast like this, but... You know, what advice would you give to your younger self that, that you might have missed? Yeah, but, yeah. You know, there's a lot of nuggets in there. but And I knew this question was coming. And so I've been thinking about it for a while. Because I was like, what is the end? Like, what? You know what I mean? What would I say? <laughs> 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 you know, and I've been thinking about it, thinking about it. And I, 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 like, from my personal experiences, my answer to that would be is like, I would say, Derek, trust your gut. Because I went through, one thing I always used to do was I'd always do like uh, gut checks early in. Okay. So early in, like, I still do it all the time. Explain that. So back in the early part of the business, when I had nothing but time, um, no family and, uh, you know, not a ton of leads coming through. <laughs> just got time. So I was like, you know what? Someone would call, let's say like a signed call on a listing, right? And I'm like qualifying. Part of my training, I knew how to qualify. I knew, like, I wasn't wasting my time with people. But I would also say, I've qualified this guy, this guy, certified wasting my time. However, I don't know quite for sure. <laughs> so I'm taking the appointment. Okay. Right? I'm going to go with a great attitude. I'm going with the goal of it not being a waste of my time, but I'm going anyways. Right? Uh -huh. And I'd go to the meeting. And if it was a waste of my time, I'd be like, check gut. One for gut. Right? I'm okay. like, it's, it's, it's accurate. And I would continuously do that. Like, there was really? so many situations where I'd be like, I'd read the situation. And not just always about waste of time, like, you know, meeting somebody new or like, you know, you got a meeting with somebody and you're like, oh, this guy's going to cancel or he's not going to show up. You know what I mean? Like, you just get those inklings in your gut, kind of. Or no like, even wanna. different businesses, right? That's like, great. this business is going to be great or this investment's going to be great or, or this is going to be great or whatever, right? So I'd be like, I knew full well inside of me. I was like, oh, I guarantee this guy's not showing up or he's going to call me when I've already been there for 20 minutes and tell me he's going to be an hour late or he's not coming. And you can almost, I could predict the situation and I would go anyways, just to prove to myself I was right or wrong. So I would do that. And then, you know, as, as the business grew and as my opportunity for risk and grew, grew, um, and you know, I'd still do those gut checks and be like, or I'd take a client on and be like, oh, I, this, 
I just can tell by this guy's character and our, our interactions, like, it's going to try and screw me somewhere or, or so this is going to happen. And it's not like I'm some negative guy walking around. Like, there's just a reality to life. Yeah. There's plenty of people I knew that was going to be great relationships, great clients, great whatever, right? But you're dealing with a lot of people on a regular basis and time. They say the time is money. It was never about time is money. It's like, it's just my time that I have to have respect for. Yeah. Right? So... I, but I also was like, didn't have the tr confidence in myself to, 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 to know for certain. So I literally would just constantly do gut checks all the time. And just, it wasn't like I was mad after if it was a waste of time. I was like, perfect. It's that much more accurate. <laughs> Man, I've, so I've ne never, never heard that before, but it's so true. And I think it's a, it's a fine line between like awareness and confidence and also like actually keeping tally like yeah. you know whatever it is you do to, to kind of keep track of it but like listen i would have painted your fence when you called me first <laughs> like, you know <laughs> like guess plumbing and painting it doesn't matter right <laughs> yeah, exactly um, but, but now it, it, it's really like oh like we're gonna get into this relationship like how am i gonna what are my guidelines gonna be where's my what's my threshold gonna be and you you build that confidence over the years but yeah back in the day it's Oh, I don't know. You about say this. yes to everything. Yeah. yeah. Like I was like, my, my mission at that point in time was I will say yes to everything. Yeah. I was open to everything. Board, a committee, involvement, this, that. I'm the guy. And that was my goal. I said, like, I'm going to be a yes man. And I'll just say yes to everything. And through that, my goal was to, to obviously put myself in uncomfortable situations and grow, but also just to continuously test my gut. And now today, sitting here, um, I've become. I'd say it almost took me probably like 13, 12, 13 years to develop that level of confidence and trust in myself, wow. which is, that's another topic, I guess, maybe. Um, <laughs> but it's just constantly testing myself and pushing myself so that today, you know, this newfound peace I've probably brought into my life probably two years ago is just that, is that, that over that, that confidence through that. And is, you know, is it always right? No, but it's kind of, I'm like, it's time tested, you know? So when I, now my mission for the last couple of years is I'm the no guy. <laughs> I'm the no guy. The, I said well, yes. And the, for, and the power I said, of saying no and it, the, how that pendulum swings, eh? Yeah. So as I went from purposely yes to purposely saying no, because I'm like, I've, like I, I know right from the get go. So I'm like, it, my gut's telling me this and I'm sticking with it. It's, as I said, it's been tested. It's been, uh, the data is there. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm, but you have to be, as you said, confident and I think you have to be diligent or uh, confident and disciplined because. It's not always. It's not easy to say no. So you have to have the confidence to say no and the discipline to to stick with it. Mm -hmm. But that took a long time to be able to to have that level of comfort and confidence in myself. So I'm not messed up in the head after I say no to something. Go, oh, maybe I should have getting FOMO. It's like no, no, no. I eliminate FOMO. You you know what you want in your life. You know what you know is important to you. You know what your boundaries are. Yeah. You you know what you you Derek. I think you've figured yourself out at this point in time. Yeah. Just go with it. I love it. <laughs> so that, that would man. be my that, answer is just, yeah. you know what? Stick with the gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard it so many times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, thank you so much, man. That was, uh, that was a powerful, powerful uh, piece of advice. And, um, you know, for everybody out there, you know, we, we ask ourselves these questions when we're sitting in our bed after a night shift and we say, why not me? Why not now? Um, and, and, you know, Derek's a great example of that. And I think, you know, uh, from his community engagement to, to his entrepreneurship to, you know, starting and making hard decisions and, and growing through through change. Uh, you know, it's, it's super powerful. So thanks so much for being here. Hey, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Thank yeah. you, Dan. And uh, for everybody tuning in, guys, you know, again, episode 49. Um, absolute pleasure to have, you know, guests like Derek come on the come on the show and, and share their story and really get into the weeds. I think a lot of times, you know, we have this assumption of, of what success is and how it looks like. And, you know, it's just a successful, easy, you know, roadmap. <laughs> and, you know, they, they always talk about what's your roadmap and what's your secret sauce? And, you know, we, we all know that it comes after uh, some long nights and some sleepless Early mornings. mornings yeah. yeah. And uh and and Derek's a, a true testament to that. So um, Legacy Realty, all uh, all their social media is going to see uh, be online if you want to check them out. Um, you know, Derek's always open for some questions and support yeah. there. And uh, thanks so much, man. Awesome, thanks, Dan. Appreciate it, man. Beauty. Oh.